Close your eyes and focus on the breath. Watch it as it comes in, watch it as it goes out. Notice how it feels. Notice where you feel it most predominantly. It might be at the nose, the rising and falling of the chest, the rise and fall of the abdomen, or anywhere in the body. We can clearly sense now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And be very careful to notice when it's comfortable and when it's not. Don't put too much pressure on it. If it doesn't feel satisfying, try breathing deeper. If it feels too strung up, let the breath grow shorter, more shallow. Allow it to find a rhythm and texture that feels just right for the body right now so that no tension builds up as you breathe in and you don't hold on to any tension as you breathe out. So the breathing process feels refreshing, energizing, soothing. Because the breath has that special quality. It can be good both for the body and for the mind. And although our prime interest right now is the mind, still the body could use a little help. If you've been thinking too much, worrying too much, it's going to have an effect on the health of the body. And because the breath is the basic energy that keeps the body going, it only stands to reason that if the breath can feel really good and refreshing and energizing, it will help the body in other ways as well. And when the body feels better, the mind has a chance to settle down and and have some rest, gather its strength. And for the time being, you don't have to think about any other responsibilities at all. This is your major responsibility, is allowing the body and the mind to heal. An important part of training the mind is having a good sense of time and place. What you're going to pick up to think about, what you're going to put down. And we all have our responsibilities in the course of the day. But you can't allow the mind to carry them around all the time. It's not the case that if you think about something for 24 hours, the thinking is going to get better and you're going to understand the problem better. There are limits to how much the mind can do before it needs rest. So this is a basic principle of learning how to care for the mind. When you find this is the right time and place to settle down, okay, settle down. And it's for anything else that would come into the range of your awareness or that would pull you away. You can say, no, not now, some other time. Because the mind needs its own space, it needs its own time to rest and recuperate. And it needs tools in order to deal with other things that might come in and distract you. This is where the Buddha's teachings on not-self are useful. They're often misunderstood as the Buddha saying, there is no self, which he never said. In fact, he said to say that there is no self is wrong view. To say that there is a self gets you tied up in a tangle of views, too, he said. What he wants you to do is see that your sense of what you are or who you are and what your responsibilities are. It's something that you choose to pick up and put down. And so often we do it without thinking. There's that old conundrum that comes from Buddhism 101 in a lot of colleges where you first hear about Buddhism. You say, well, if there is no self, then what does the karma, what gets reborn? And that's taking the issue backwards. 
the issue is, given that there is karma, what does this teaching on not-self mean? It's a type of action. It is a type of karma. And you have to figure out when it's skillful and when it's not. What ways it's skillful and what ways it's not. So anything that would pull you away or adds extra burdens to the mind that are unnecessary, the thinking or the perception of not-self is a useful one to have. Say, well, that's not really not myself, it's not really mine. Even your own body, at some point you're going to have to give up. But in the meantime, while it's useful, while you can get it to sit when you want it to sit, and lie down when you want it to lie down, and work when you want it to work, make use of the amount of control that you do have over it. And be selective in what you're going to latch on to as your responsibility right now. That's learning how to have a sense of time and place for your sense of self or your sense of what belongs to you or is your responsibility right now. Right now you have the responsibility of getting the mind to stay focused. So you can identify with that. But as for other things that might come up that demand your attention, you say, wait a minute, you're not really me, you're not really mine, I don't need you right now. This is not the time and place. For as long as you're going to keep changing your sense of who you are and what your responsibilities are and where the limits of your responsibilities extend. Try to do it skillfully. And we start out, of course, as little kids. If you've got a little brother and someone down the street is beating up on him, you go down. He's your little brother. You've got to defend him, or at least take him home to safety. A very strong sense of, this is my brother. But then you get home and you start playing together, and your little brother takes your truck truck, all of a sudden he's not your brother anymore. He's a stranger who's taking what belongs to you. Or he's the other out there taking what belongs to you. And your sense of self has changed immediately. We do this all the time. When you stay at home, you have one sense of who you are, what your responsibilities are, what your role is. When you go to work, you're a different person. When you're engaged in mental activity, the body gets put aside. Then you identify with your thoughts or your feelings. And then there are other times when you're very much your body. So as long as our sense of who we are keeps changing all the time, you might say it's a verb, selfing, we self in different ways. An important part of the practice is learn how to do it skillfully, have a sense of when it's skillful to identify with something and when it's not. When does it add unnecessary burdens? Or when does it get in the way of what really needs to be done? Because if you don't have this sense of learning how to disidentify, then if a responsibility comes up or there's an issue in your life that you keep worrying about, it totally takes over. then you lose sense of how you need to train the mind, need to give the mind time to recover. And the classic images of a knife that needs to be sharpened. You just keep using it to cut, 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 all the time it gets dull. And it takes a lot more energy to cut, and you find that you do a sloppy job. And yet you just keep on cutting and cutting and cutting, because you think, well, this stuff has got to get cut. The wise person knows that if you really want to cut through, you have to stop cutting for a while so that you can allow the, the knife a chance to get sharpened. And once it's sharpened, then you can start cutting again. So whatever the responsibility might be, in the, during the time when you're sharpening your knife, you don't want to be thinking about that, you don't want to concern yourself with that, you want to do a good job of sharpening the knife. especially if you sharpen it in the old way, where you just have a large whetstone, and you have to give it all your attention. 
so you don't ruin the blade. Then when it's sharp, okay, then you can come back and just one chop, cut right through things. It's an important part of caring for the mind is having a sense of time and place, what things you should think about. And when you find that the thinking is not getting anywhere, then you stop. No matter how much it may scream at you, I've got this problem, I've got to work at it. Say, look, I can't deal with it right now. The mind isn't ready for it. The mind needs to be cared for. The mind needs to be looked after. It's your most important tool. So you treat it well. Like right now. This is a time for getting the mind to be still. It's not a time to be thinking about issues at home, issues at work, tomorrow or the next day or yesterday. It's time to allow the mind to stay right here with the present moment, because that's the most restful thing you can do for it. Allow the mind to stay with the sensation of really nice breathing. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel really good right now? Just one really good breath. That's all you have to concern yourself with, one good breath at a time. Then think of the breathing as a whole body process. It's not just that you sense it at one spot in the body. There are many areas in the body where you sense the breathing process. And then the mind gets more still. It notices more of these breathing sensations. It's like listening to a, a piece of music. The more still you get your mind, the more you can hear what's going on. The subtle things that you would otherwise miss. And that way the breath becomes more and more absorbing, more interesting. And when it feels really good, the boundary between your awareness and the breath seems to dissolve so that you're one with the breathing. The awareness and the breathing are right there together. They seem to melt into each other. So the breath fills your awareness and your awareness fills the body of the breath. Then just allow them to stay together that way for a while. This is where it gets really healing. There'll be a sense of ease, a sense of refreshment. This is healing, both for the body and for the mind. And don't tell yourself, well, a few seconds of that is enough. Sometimes you need a long time. One of the problems when people meditate is that they get in a hurry. They say, well, I've done that. What's the next step? Well, allow this step to have its effect, especially if the mind has been worn down for a long time. It needs to stay with its medicine. So again, whatever little voices come nibbling away at your awareness, saying, you've got to think about this. I want to go on to that. You say, no, nope, this is all I need right now. This is what I need right now. Again, it's a matter of having a sense of time and place, of the rhythms of the mind. If it's been distracted and weighed down by its concerns for a long time, sometimes it's good to have a good long stretch of just being really quiet, just breathing. A sense of oneness. And the mind is with one object, and that one object fills your awareness. With a sense of ease, anywhere in the body, allow it to seep through the whole body. There's a sense of fullness in any part of the body, allow it to stay full all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out-breath. In other words, don't squeeze it out when you breathe out. If the breath has to go out, it'll do it on its own. You don't have to push it out. And then just drink in that sense of refreshment. This is how you heal the body and heal the mind. So when the time comes that you actually have to put them to work, they're ready to go to work. You've cared for them properly.
So we have this whole hour. There's really nothing else you have to do right now. Just learn how to be with the breath. And any thoughts that nibble away at the mind and say, no, we've got to think about that, think about this, learn how to say, no, not now. If they come up again, remind them, no, not now. Don't get discouraged if they keep coming back. It's an old habit you've got to unlearn, and sometimes that takes time. But even if the hour is spent just saying no, not now to those thoughts, it's an hour well spent. You're developing new habits, learning how to distance yourself from the things that come up in the mind. You don't have to be responsible for them all the time. You don't have to take them on all the time. You don't even have to finish them all the time. A thought comes up and it hasn't really gotten coherent. You don't have to make it coherent before you let it go. Allow it to drop away, even though you haven't figured out yet what it's about. Then ask yourself that question again. What would be a really good breath to breathe right now? One good breath at a time. And you find that the hour will be over before you know it. <laughs>